Hello everybody, my name is Praveen Rajan. I'm the managing director of uh, Sharp Garuda Farm Equipments. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the types of brush cutters uh, that there are in the market. And I will also touch upon the types of engines uh, that are commonly available in brush cutters. So let's talk about uh, the most common type of brush cutter. The one that comes to mind when you say the word brush cutter, that's the side pack model. So we've got the side pack model here. And then uh, the slightly, uh, this, the one that takes the second place would be this uh, backpack brush cutter. And then the one that takes the third place will be the, the trolley brush cutter. So let's start from the side pack brush cutter is very uh, common. Um, where would you use this? So let me touch upon that. The side pack brush cutter is, is ideal when you have a flat land and you just have some weeds to get cleared. Now, in this uh, side pack brush cutter, what you would do, what I see people commonly doing, a mistake that people I see doing is, uh, they have the side pack brush cutter on and they start twisting their hips to, to do this motion, to try and clear this uh, weed in an arc, in more like a semicircle, half circle sort of way. Now that's one of the problems uh, that needs to be fixed. The whole reason for having a bicycle type handlebar in your side pack brush cutter is to leverage that. It's for you to keep doing this. It's, it's more like you, you push on one handle and you pull on the other handle. You keep doing that and your machine is going to do an arc. That's how you should be using it. And if you see someone using it by using their hips to arc around uh, their body, then uh, please still let them know that they need to be doing this push-pull on the handle. That's why we have a side pack brush cutter with a push-pull handle. Now the side pack brush cutter, as I said, is very popular and uh, the user would wear it on their shoulder, the, most of the weight of the engine and 50% uh, of the engine weight and the rest of the uh, product is going to be hung from the shoulder. Uh, so it's also called a shoulder pack brush cutter in some places. Um, it's ideal for flatlands, etc. And it's also good for slopes. So if you're going on a slope and you got to clear some weeds on the slope or trim grass on the slope, the side pack, side pack brush cutter is ideal for that. Now let me compare and contrast that with the backpack brush cutter. The backpack brush cutter, where most of the engine weight, I mean engine weight, the product weight, everything's hung from the shoulders and it's, it's actually weighing you back down like this. Um, and um, one of the, that's the disadvantage that I'll tell you of the side pack brush cutter, backpack brush cutter is that it's quite heavier than the side pack brush cutter because it's got a frame, it's got some cushion, it's got some springs and then there is a flexible shaft. There's quite a lot of equipment on the backpack brush cutter that the side pack brush cutter does not have. Now, on the, the advantage of a backpack brush cutter is that uh, you see that we have got a loop handle on the backpack brush cutter and it's not a bicycle handle bar. Uh, the loop handle lets you cut bushes that are slightly above the ground height. So maybe three to four feet high you can pull on the loop handle and cut, cut your uh, bushes like that. But you can never do that with a bicycle type uh, handlebar on a side pack brush cutter. So that's where the uh, main advantage comes for the backpack brush cutter. And the other advantage with the backpack brush cutter is you've got a variety of attachments that can go on it. One is uh, the most popular one is the cultivator attachment, which you can use to remove weeds from the farmland. Uh, it's, not, it's a very light duty equipment. It's uh, the gearbox is filled with uh, grease. It's not an oil lubricated one, but it can get the job done to some extent. And uh, there's also another attachment called the paddy gatherer, which you can use to harvest paddy or wheat and uh, put them all on one side. So these are some of the advantages of a backpack brush cutter. But one thing that you should never do with a backpack brush cutter is, is start removing weeds on a slope. When you do that, because of the weight of the engine and your own weight, your center of gravity is going to be shifted behind and you're very prone to falling over your back. So if you plan to remove weeds on a slope, always choose a side pack brush cutter and not a backpack brush cutter. Right, now let's talk about the uh, third type of uh, brush cutter, which is the trolley type of brush cutter. Now, um, the advantage is quite obvious. Uh, the majority of the weight of the product is uh, rested on the two pneumatic tires and on the ground. So your back is relieved from uh, carrying all the weight. 
So if you are someone that's got back problems and uh, you don't want to carry uh, that weight on your shoulders or you've got a larger piece of land and you cannot be bothered to carry something on your shoulders for such a long time, then the trolley brush cutter makes uh, perfect sense. Uh, the trolley brush cutter, again, uh, the, it's limited in terms of purpose. You can have one of those uh, tap and go nylon cutters or you can have a multi teeth blade or a three teeth blade, whatever on it. And uh, you, you can do the same half circle uh, arc that you do with a side pack uh, using the same machine. You can still do that with the wheels. Uh, the wheels are not connected to each other, so they can spin independent of each other. So you can still do the arc motion with it and it's very comfortable. Um, it takes all the weight of your back and you can use it for however long uh, you have to. There's no vibrations that are coming through your body uh, because it's got its own pneumatic tires, etc. Uh, but um, yes, you cannot do uh, any other things that you can do with a backpack brush cutter. You may put a cultivator attachment and make use of it to some extent, but you can't really use it to cut. Uh, bushes that are two or three feet above the ground level, you can't really do that with that machine. So there are limitations, but there are certain advantages to that. Right now, uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the types of engines on these brush cutters. So the most common uh, type of engines that you find these days are uh, the two stroke engine, which is available in uh, 43 cc or 52 cc, sometimes even 62 and 73 cc is available. But the most common one is the 43 cc which is adequate for most of the purposes that you're going to be using it for. The other engine, on the other hand, we have the four-stroke engine, which is go, which is 36cc uh, uh, four-stroke engine, which has got overhead uh, camshaft, uh, an OHC type of engine. Uh, the code name for that is GX35, is what uh, is very common in the market these days. It's a cam built driven engine. Uh, well, that details uh, can be kept aside for now. but. Um, the main difference between the two stroke and four stroke. Now you might know that, uh, you know, the government has banned all two stroke vehicles, motorbikes. Uh, so you don't find them anywhere on your um, bikes and mopeds anymore. But uh, because of emission regulations, you know, BS norms, Euro norms, they all came in and the two stroke engines just vanished. But uh, for some reason, we still have that in, uh, going forward in these uh, agriculture segment. Uh, the two-stroke engine has got its uh, benefits as well as its drawbacks. Let's touch upon that in a minute now. So the two-stroke engine advantages, I would say uh, they're very simple in construction. There isn't anything complicated uh, to do with valve mechanisms or anything to do with that. Uh, they've got ports and uh, the fuel gets into the chamber, combust, uh, all that. Uh, that's for another video details. But the two-stroke engine is very simple in construction and it's less in weight, uh, there's more power to the weight, uh, you know, the power to weight ratio is higher in two stroke engines. Um, but uh, some of the disadvantages, yes, um, the most obvious one is pollution, uh, because the scavenging doesn't happen uh, all the uh, very well in engines. So you do have some um, uh, raw fuel or uncombusted gases, fuel charge coming out of the uh, exhaust. So that's, uh, down the drain. Uh, the other disadvantage is uh, people can get the oil mixing to fuel the ratio wrong. So my recommendation is never mix anything more than 25 ml to 30 ml of uh, two stroke oil per liter of petrol. Now uh, some people keep mixing up to about 50 ml of oil into the petrol. Now I highly uh, recommend against it. Uh, that's one way to get all your spark plug plugs to foul uh, your, uh, there's going to be a lot of smoke in your exhaust. If you don't want all that, you don't want starting troubles, uh, stick to 25 ml of uh, 2T oil per liter of fuel. And if you're feeling not so confident with 25 ml, you can go up to 30 ml, not an ml more than that. You can take my word on this. And only mix 2T oil, never mix uh, 20W40 or engine oil just because it's laying around. They're not interchangeable. 2T oil is 2T oil and engine oil is engine oil. Never mix them together. Now, some of the problems with the two-stroke oil is that, like I said, the people can get uh, people can get the mixing ratios wrong and it can ruin your engine very quickly. Uh, if your uh, people mix very little oil, then you're gonna wear out the pistons and rings, etc. If you're gonna mix more oil, then as I said before, smoke, plugs going out, all that's going to be there. Uh, 
so that's your two stroke disadvantages uh, the four stroke engine is slightly heavier but uh, you don't have to bother about mixing fuel and oil together what ratio it goes so you've got your regular engine oil going into the crankcase uh, when we talk about that uh, let me let me just tell you right now uh, no more than 80 to 90 ml is required in the engine crankcase do not put 100 ml or anything more than that do not tilt the engine and uh, fill it up until the brim of the of where, where you pour the oil don't do that you only have to uh, pour in about 80 to uh, 90 ml of oil and uh, i would recommend that you use uh, 10 w40 engine oil not uh, 20 w40 if that's what you have you can use it uh, that's better than nothing but if possible always use 10 w30 that's because uh, the engine's tolerance is, uh, is very small and uh, it works best with the 10 w30 uh, type of engine oil um, now in the four stroke of course you've got very little smoke coming out uh, because you're not mixing any oil with it and uh, uh, you uh, the maintenance on that is uh, you'll need to replace your engine oil every 50 hours that's because there's no oil filter as such on this engine it's just by design it's nothing wrong that just by design there's no oil filter on this engine so you will need to uh, replace the oil every 50 hours or so so that's something uh, that your four stroke engine the one major advantage with the four stroke engine is that it consumes about uh, 60% of the fuel that a two-stroke engine would consume equals I mean uh, so you save about 40% of fuel um, when you're using the four-stroke engine the, the difference is fairly visible the, the the week that you start using a four-stroke brush cutter you're gonna tell right away that you're saving a lot of fuel so the difference is that visible you don't have to have a piece of paper and start writing down the time of operations etc uh, so that's there. That's definitely there. I'm pretty sure going forward, uh, four strokes are the way ahead in terms of engines as such. Uh, when maintained well, they, they really don't give you any trouble uh, with the regarding uh, engine longevity, etc. There's no trouble at all. We've uh, used quite a lot, uh, and there's quite a lot in the market uh, as well. So no worries about that. Now. Uh, while we are on the topic of engines, I'd like to tell you um, a little maintenance tip. Always make sure you're taking care of your uh, air filter uh, because uh, if a badly maintained air filter um, lets through dust and your uh, any foreign particles inside your engine quickly wears out your piston rings and all of that. So, uh, you know, be careful. Uh, always uh, wash your air filter in soapy water. Don't use petrol or anything. You'll just your air filter is going to disappear in your hand if you put petrol on it. So uh, uh, the, the sponge reacts with petrol, all that. So always use uh, soapy water, uh, wash your uh, air filter and put it back before you uh, run the machine for the day. If you're running in a very dusty environment, I'd recommend that you uh, wash your air filter every day. And also make sure if you're shifting from a two stroke engine to a four stroke engine, remember to first pour oil in the crankcase. We've had many customers who bought a product online and uh, they, thought, they thought it was just a regular brush cutter and they poured fuel into the fuel tank and they ran the engine. And uh, next thing you know, in five minutes time, uh, your engine ceased because there's no oil in the crankcase. So that's an expensive repair. We had to replace your rings, piston, your crankcase, cylinder, everything had to be replaced. That's as good as replacing your whole product. So just be uh, cautious on that. Uh, the last product that I've got to talk to you about here is the electric brush cutter. This is our uh, latest and greatest machine, I can say, that we've added to our portfolio. Now, this is uh, not the regular run-of-the-mill electric brush cutter that you may find on your Amazon or on your, uh, your favorite dealer shop. Um, I'll show you a photo of that product um, just about now. Now that's your regular brush cutter, it's got a brushed DC motor, your brushes go off, you'll need to replace your brushes every now and then. It's not got a lot of power, it runs somewhere around one hour. In our field trials, it, not, it did not run anything more than an hour. Now this brush cutter, what we've got here is, uh, is, is designed for our purpose and um, we brought it now to India. Uh, we were selling this in another country before and now it's got two speeds. This is a professional model, as I call it, because it's got a brushless DC motor and it's got a, a lithium polymer battery in it. Uh, the battery lasts for four hours. Um, so that's uh, quite a lot of uh, 
hours for you to run this machine. It's extremely lightweight. Uh, the motor power is actually one kilowatt. You know, most of our engines that we use on our brush cutters, be it four stroke or two stroke, they're about one kilowatt or a little less than that. And if you know anything about motors, they, they can provide the torque from zero RPM. So your engines cannot do that. Your engines need to reach, I don't know, 6,000 RPM or something on these brush cutter engines to provide your maximum torque. But on the electric motors, they can start producing uh, torque from zero RPM, which is why some of your electric vehicles are really quick off the mark. So the same kind of effect is seen in these brush cutters. Uh, they, the, although it's one kilowatt, on paper, it's far more powerful when you use it. You're gonna know when you start using it in the first minute or so. So I believe that uh, this is going to be the future because uh, there's no uh, air filter to maintain every day. There's no oil to replace every 50 hours. There's no fumes or exhaust smoke uh, that bothers your breathing. Um, it's just an all-in-all -all trouble-free machine. Uh, it can operate in any sort of environment. So that's that. And um, so I think I've spoken enough on the brush cutters. Uh, what I'd like to let you know now is uh, if uh, you guys have any problems in choosing your brush cutter, then I'd recommend uh, go ahead and give this number a call that appears below. And we'd be happy to assist you in uh, choosing the right brush cutter for your needs. And uh, if you like this video and if you uh, like to see something in specific, like a particular maintenance procedure on a brush cutter that you've struggled with or you've uh, not had success with mechanics trying to do that particular service procedure and you want to know it from us, what's the right way of doing it, um, do feel free to leave a comment down below and I will pick it up and uh, make a new video for you on that. Okay, thank you. See you next time.